So, hey, <laughs> it's another Hot Topic Tuesday. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I'm not going to take any time other than to say it is tax day this year, mm -hmm. April 18th. Our favorite. Thanks, yeah, all that good stuff. This lady is Jeannie Morris. She is a professional stager. She happens to be with Transforming Spaces. And instead of you guys getting to hear me, let's give her a good 29 minutes of your attention. So it's all yours, boss. All right, great. Aw, cute. Wow, applause from the crowd here. So let me just start by touching briefly on this uh, slide. It's cute, it's a cartoon, but it's really not funny. And so for all of us that are in the real estate business, this is the worst thing that we would have as our clients experience is price reduction, price reduction, price reduction. So let's talk about what some of the options could be so that you don't have to do that. Stay closed just in case. Okay. One second. There we go. Should go after that. Okay. So this is a little bit about me that, uh, that can help you understand who it is that's talking to you for the next half hour. So I'm a Rochester resident, born and raised here, born uh, in Kings, on Kingsmere in Christian Hills and raised my kids here. So I'm a local girl that really cares about this area and my business is here. It's on South Street in downtown Rochester. And you can read through the other stuff. But my parents used to used to own a drugstore here in Rochester. And so I'm proud to say that I picked up where they left off. What I'd like to talk about today is I'd like to talk about staging. And staging is more than just bringing things into a home. It's a marketing tactic. And so I want to start by talking about let's look at where the seller's head is at. So here's what we know. We know that how we're all wired is we're wired so that we're either left brain or right brain oriented. So we either think about things from a logical perspective or we think about things from an emotional perspective. But as people out dealing with people all the time, they give us cues so that we know how they think. They say things like, uh, this is where my family was raised, or I want to make sure I get a return on investment. Those are the cues that tell us how it is that they see the world. And why that's important is because when we know that, then we can meet them where they are and help them start to change their mindset, perhaps, on how they think about their home and how they're thinking about the real estate process. So for us, the biggest job is to get them from thinking about what's in it for me to what's in it for my client. This is the hardest job I think we have. When I go in and do a staging consultation, here's what I say. I'm going to ask you for the next few hours to take off your hat of being a homeowner and put on your hat of being a marketing person. So we need to coach them on that this is about meeting the buyer's expectations, making sure that we deliver a product that they want and that they are willing to pay to get. And here's what we also know. We also know that it's not just the sellers that have expectations, but our buyers have expectations. And the buyer's expectation is they want this. And they want that at as little of a price as possible. And so we're caught in the middle of buyer expectations, seller expectations, and it's our job to figure out how to lead both through the process. So here's something that I'd love to, to offer as research for you. Uh, in addition to the document that Darwin sent you for homework, this is another thing that you can start to look at because as you're starting to consider what your marketing strategy is on how you represent your sellers, here's a study that can give you some inside information. This is called the Digital Media Hunt. You can find it on Google. And it's a joint study that the National Association of Realtors did with Google. And what they were looking at is what is the change in the shift 
that digital devices have had on how we sell. And the bottom line is, I'll save you the reading, but I would love for you to have an opportunity to go look at it yourself. The bottom line is this, before anyone even gets off the couch, before they put down their cup of coffee, they will sit there and look at 11 properties before they decide to take action on one. So for all of us in the real estate business, what that means is, is we have to figure out how to stand out from the other 10 to make sure that ours is the one that they get to see. So this is something I just pulled off the MLS yesterday. This is a property in Rochester. This is this realtor's business card that is out on the MLS for everyone to see. What you, I don't know if you can see the detail, but let me point out, this is a fireplace. They've got the couch right in front of the fireplace. That is the money in the room. What a bummer. So as a realtor, you have really different choices on how you want to market your property. This is listing market strategy A, which is hurry up and get in on the market as fast as possible. And that's what people are going to react to. Listing marketing strategy B is you just clear the deck. Now you have as much out of the room as possible, but here's the bummer about doing that. It doesn't help with the money in the room on this photo either, because now we have something that looks really dated and it's not showing how this property is going to be used to its capacity. So when you're looking at a room like this, when I'm looking at a room like this, when our buyers are looking at a room like this, there's no emotional attachment. There's no cozy factor to say, oh, I can see my family spending time here, making memories here. We're not engaging that part of our buyer's brain. Listing marketing strategy C, this is where I sit. And this is where staging comes in so that we can create a visual story that helps buyers understand what kind of lifestyle they get to enjoy in this home. So let's, let me just give you a minute to think about what your marketing strategy is and if you're happy with your choice to date because you're in one of two camps. You're either a one-man band where you're doing everything yourself or you're traveling with people that can come alongside you and make it a little easier. So the question that I always get is, is it really effective? The answer is yes. Those of us that take this job seriously and run it as a business, we can tell you that we have data to show that it does. This is an example of one realtor's experience in 2020. Six of the houses that he staged for the year and six of the houses that he didn't stage for the year. And what this showed us is not only did he have a higher percent of list, he had less days on the market and he made less commission, which means also his client left some money on the table. So there is data out there and don't just trust me for that. There's other sources that you can look at. I, the flyer that uh, Darwin sent out, that tells you right there, that's the National Association of Realtors and that's 2023 data. They have data for every two years back. You can go and see a consistent story that staging decreases the amount of, of time on the market and increases what they get at the closing table. So you'll probably want to know what does it look like then to work with a professional stager? What, what does that mean as far as cost, as far as how it would work? So let me run through this really quick, and then I want to open it up so that you guys have time for questions, okay? So this is an example of how transforming spaces works. Most of us work very similarly. We start with a staging consultation. It's two hours, and it's for us to go through the homeowner and help them with that mindset shift that I was talking about before so that they can start to look at their house like I look at it, which is a property that's going on the market and we want to get them the most money possible. There's a photo prep service, there's staging enhancement, and then there's vacant staging. So depending on what the client needs, in my perfect world, they wouldn't need me beyond a consultation. But if they do, there's ways to be able to, to meet them there. 
Here's an example of a staging consultation that's just a consultation, no inventory was brought. The photo that you see up at the top right, that's a photo of where we started. So as you can see from the photo, this does not present as strong as it could because we've got furniture that makes the room look small. We've also got a bed that's coming right at you. And so the room looks tiny. All we did is move furniture around. We did take one piece out and put it in the garage. And this was the homeowner's presentation on the market. This one, just in case, I'm gonna give you some names because we're all local people. This was Manny Floresu. He's um, out of the real estate one office. This was 2020, this, this picture was from January of 2020. He had 35 plus showings, multiple offers, and it sold 25% over list. Here's another example of just moving things around and editing things. This, this is not me bringing in any inventory. What you see at the top here is where we started. This is how the, he lived. And there's nothing wrong with that because it was motivational to him. He felt good in that space. But when we go to sell it, it's not about people coming to visit this young man in his bedroom. It's about telling a story to the homeowner about how their children can live. So this is another example of no inventory, just a staging consultation. This was a house in 2019 in Twin Lakes. It was four months on the market, by the way, by one realtor in this capacity. The homeowner called and said, I'm not getting my house sold. So that realtor was released. I was brought in to do a staging consultation. A new realtor was brought in and the home was on the market for three days in its new presentation and it sold for 11,000 over list. Here's the last example for you on a staging consultation. Can you see in this top one how the furniture was working for the homeowner? But it doesn't work when you're trying to market a property. It creates a wall. And that's what we don't want to do. We want to show off the floors. We want people to be able to see the fireplace. And so by just moving things around, this was Maureen Francis. It was a home in 2020 in Bloomfield Hills. And it went under contract the first week. Okay, this is a staging enhancement. So what you see at the top is you see a lot going on in this picture. So we took what the client had, which was the bookcases on either side, the table, the chairs, and we edited some of the things out. I brought in a rug. I brought in covers to go over the chair so that it wasn't as much of a wood story and just clean things up a little bit. This was one that Cheryl Sage put on the market in spring of 21. It was on the market four days and it sold well over list. Here's another example of one where it's a staging enhancement. So I brought in some inventory, but not a lot. And we just changed the story here. So what I did is I took off the shades on the shades on the lights so that it updated that light fixture a little bit. We removed the window treatments. We changed the story of the furniture, the chairs that were sitting around the table. I didn't even move the table, just enough to get the rug out from under it. Uh, that one was Mike Jones in Twin Lakes, summer 21, 10 days on the market and sold at ask. This was one where a home was on the market vacant and it was on the market for three months with no offers. That client released that realtor, hired a new one, and that realtor called me. And so Hannah Walker relisted it in Washington. It was on the market for three months with no offers in its, in its first way, empty, and then off the market in 12 days at ask. The last example I have for you is another vacant house. And now here's one of the things that I think is important that you think about with vacant. This is a house in Rochester. I think it's a, it's either First Street or Third Street. I can't remember. But this is a cute little Cape Cod. But when you walk in, when it's in this state, it looks tiny, tiny. Well, I did the measurements. You can fit a queen size bed in there. But if I wouldn't have put a queen size bed in there, now you got a problem because you got people saying it's too small. It's too cramped. We can't make it work. Well, this isn't me changing the wall color at all. 
this is me working with it, but can you see how the light bounces around because I brought in bedding that's light and airy? No, we did not paint those walls. That is just what happens with light reflection. So that house Ray had on the market for four days, two offers, sold at list, uh, and that was January in 21. Oh, and by the way, so Ray's broker, uh, Brian Parkinson, did I say it right? Parkinson. Parkinson, sorry. He, when I went through with them, when it was empty to try and figure out pricing, they ended up listing this 25 over where they were gonna before it was staged. And after stage, they said, you know what, let's bump it. I think we can, I think we can make some juice out of this. So I have lots of data on this and I could talk about it all day long, but here's a few things that I want to make sure that I do with you guys is I know that you're gonna get pushback. I know you are because I get it too. So what do you do in that circumstance? Here's some conversation starters. If you can't read it, feel free to email me and I'll send you this if you would really like to push into doing this kind of thing for your clients. But the pushback that you're gonna get, I want top dollar for this house. I don't see the reason to stage. Uh, I can't afford staging. I don't see its value. There's, the list goes on and on. It's just a matter of hearing where their objection is, understanding what side of the brain they're working from and meeting them there. So this is something that if you're interested in it, it gives a little bit more detail. It's something that you can have for your listing presentations on the different kinds of services. But let me just say this. Don't feel like you have to just work with me. There's lots of qualified stagers out there. Of course, I'd be glad to meet you. But if this, if I'm not the right fit for you, and I'm not, I'm a little lippy. So you might not like me, but that's okay. What you do like is you do like serving your clients well. And that's my job is to help you figure out how you can do that. So I'm done. And I just wanted to open it up for questions. Yeah, let me get mine going here again. So let me check, uh, guys, if you want to do the chat, if you want to bring yourself off of hold, uh, let us know. Um, Darwin? Yes, go for it. We have a question in Lapeer. We're just wondering about when the seller pays, at the beginning or after, or does it, does it get, come out of proceeds or what? Yeah, so I think it's a it's a... It's a both and kind of question, kind of answer. So I've done it this way, where the seller pays for it up front when I'm there, where the realtor pays for it, where the seller pays for it and the realtor reimburses them at closing. Or I've also done it where I've been uh, paid with the title company. So I think just like how you guys are trying to assess what is your client like? Is this someone who's gonna be with you for the long haul? And I would just ask you do the same thing for your stager. If you feel like they're a solid client and they're gonna get all the way to the closing table, then that can be deferred. And there's many of us that do that, okay? So that kind of brings up, don't go away, stay oh. here. We're gonna hang out together. Okay. Um, who pays for it? Yeah, so here's my two cents. My two cents is, is that the client should pay for it because if their home was in a market-ready position to go with, then you wouldn't need me. If they're not in a market-ready position, then that's on them. So I can get behind realtors paying for the consultation and saying if there's anything else that's that's for you to work out with the stager. But I really feel like they need some skin in the game. And here's what I've seen. What I've seen is, is when you all pay for it up front, they're not as motivated as if they have paid for it themselves. So the task list that I give them of what to do, I give that to my realtors. It doesn't get done as quickly. It doesn't get done as efficiently. And it's just like anything that we've talked about on any other kinds of products. You get what you pay for. And when they pay for it, I feel like they really invest in it. 
I, I agree with that. You know, and we, some of you know about the menu of services that we've introduced you to pre previously. One of the things you might do on your highest program, the platinum program, is to provide the $250 staging consultation. Um, that way they can determine, and in a case like if it's Jeannie, Jeannie can sell them uh, into what additional services they may wish to take care of. But as the minimum, she's going to make the property more ready than anyone else would. So, you know, one question that um, came here and it's regarding the picture. So I think we, we have a couple of them that would work here for this. Mm -hmm. But you can see it looks like aside from some of the staging changes is that your picture settings are different and brighter pictures. So if we didn't paint, what was it that caused that? So is this the one that I go back with? Yeah, I think we've got to do this. So let one. me show you a couple pictures because I think that will help. So this is an example of one. This, this is not a change in paint. Now, granted, there's no lights on in the, in the top picture. It was January. So it's not like I can guarantee that we had the same light reflection in the window outside from both days. But I can tell you that, yes, I do play with the settings, but I don't play with them enough where it's that much of a difference. I'm telling you, it happens all the time. Because if you have, here's how light reflection value works. With paint, it's going to bounce off of what's in the room. If all you have is a dark color, it's always gonna make that room feel, feel darker yet because there's nothing for it to bounce off of. Because there's a white bed in there with, with uh, lighter things all around it, mirror in there, it's, helping bounce that color around. And so all of that matters. It matters the time of day that you take the photograph. Here's another one where I'll show you. Can you help me back? This room was not painted. Absolutely not. We were concerned about other rooms, but we weren't concerned about painting this room. This is an example of a room. I just moved it. Just moved it. Oh, yeah. okay. Hold on. This is an example of a room. Do you see where the blinds are, are not open? That's not helping. And so the blinds are open here and we've taken off some of the dark things that eat it. And we've turned on the lights all around the room. It makes a difference. It's not- a I was gonna say, and one of, so one of the things just for ourselves, if we don't have a stage or involved, look to, what does it look like? I mean, we got digital cameras these days. You can see what it looks like. Right. Should I have the blinds open? Am I taking this from the right angle? But one of the really simple things is just turn on all the lights. Right. So here's the one thing Darwin said, are there some tips you can give them that just work all the time? Yes. Always. So it's up, down, on, off. So if you want to take notes, up, down, on, off, and left to right. So the up, down, always take up the windows, always put down the toilet seat. <laughs> oh my God. It's the hole to nowhere, y'all. That's not marketable. Always turn on the lights and always make sure that you have, what's the off? On the lights, off. Let me think about that a minute. It'll come to you. It'll come to me. And then from left to right with, with the window treatments, make sure that the window treatments are out of the way because what you want them to see is the view. I mean, what a bummer. This house has a beautiful backyard. You couldn't see it in the first one. That's not marketable. But to show them what they get to keep, that's marketable. So I'll think about what the on office. All right, let's keep going. We'll step down here and see what else we've got. So as you pay for a consultation, if so, then, so yeah, well, let's go back to the basic 250. Mm -hmm. So does it go towards staging? No, because the advice that they get, the resources they get, that's what they're paying for. So stagers like me come in with paint samples. We come in with lighting samples if they need to update a few lights. Uh, we come in with carpet samples and resources. 
So that's a resource for them just to get that consultation. And, and when you're there with us, with the seller, are we moving things around while you're there? Or is it just a verbal conversation about what they could, should? It, it, it can be whatever you need it to be. So I will roll up my sleeves and get after it and start to move some things around. But normally what I do is I plan on leaving them with a sheet that has all their tasks that they need to do on the front. And then on the back, I put a visual of where things need to move in a room. And then I take a copy of that and I give it to my realtors. And then that's how everybody knows what the expectation is. So photos then, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Is that what you do also? Do you have a photographer? I have photographers that I feel are very good at what they do. But the only photos I take are for myself. Gotcha. Gotcha. We got a question here. She did because uh, one of them was burnt uh, out. Let's let's catch that. Yeah. Guys, take a look at the ceiling fan. And you might actually as soon as you ask that, I'm Thank taking you. a look in comparison. Yeah. Uh you can actually see. Yeah. If you look, there's a burnout light. Yeah. So the question was, is did we replace lights? Did we make them brighter? What did we do to handle that? Yeah. And so he, while we're talking about lighting, here's the other thing. Please look at the light fixtures that are in bathrooms and dining room tables, uh, above dining room tables and kitchens, because it's important that we have all the lights on. And we need to match because now we're dealing with, we've got LED and we got incandescent. And so pick a lane and stay there. I like it. Is it? True, the brighter, the better? No, God, no. So Can you be a little less emphatic? Uh, I can try. <laughs> the, the, okay, so what we have is we've got warm white, daylight, and bright white. Bright white, you can land a plane with. That is way too bright. Daylight can work, but I think the best rule of thumb, if, if you're interested in taking notes, I would say do warm white, 40 watt, and let that ride because that's a nice gentle light, but it, it works in bathrooms, it works in, in lamps, it works everywhere. So that's a good go-to. Awesome, awesome. So when is the best time to get staging involved? Prior to listing them for sale or once they become difficult to sell? <laughs> so as soon as you have a listing agreement signed, that's when you bring a stager in because the more time that we have, the better it's going to show. If you have a client, and we all have had them, like this one, where they say, no, no, I just want it on the market. Sometimes people have to learn the hard way. But if you can get into a rhythm where it's part of the services that you offer, and people know that your business card is, your, your properties look like this, then you get known as having the gold standard. I think it's one of the things, remember, and you kind of said, this is their business card. Just, uh, you know, they're, they're going proudly presented by, and it looks like a hoarder's home. Right. So here's the thing I, that I would love for you to consider. When you go on a listing appointment, my guess is, is you don't go in gym clothes. And the reason is because you want to present as well as possible on who you are and how you market and the kind of professional you are. That's how we should be presenting their property. I like it. So guys, we're approaching the end. Do we have any other questions? If so, feel free to take yourself off mute uh, or put it in the chat. Otherwise, uh, we're going to begin to wrap up. Go ahead, Marjorie. Yeah, I had a question. I put it in the chat. I don't think you saw it. Um, but is there a contract involved um, when you when a seller you know, wants the staging? Yes. So if I'm bringing inventory, there is, and it's not a complicated one because I'm not a lawyer. So okay. it's about a page and it's just saying that they understand that I'm going to pick it up. They're giving me permission to be able to place it and then have access to the home in and out mm -hmm. and just a few like basics like that. But um, yeah, I mean, the stager really needs to have that. And it's between the stager and the seller, not the realtor. Okay. So is the balance due at closing or how do you collect the, the funds? So generally speaking, I would say 90% of my projects, the client is paying as soon as the home is staged. 
Okay. For the 10% that aren't, it's because there's a financial situation and the realtor and I make that call that we will just make sure that I'm reimbursed at closing. Okay. So it's really a judgment call on the client. Um, the right way is for them to pay up front. But if we have somebody that needs a little help to get to the closing table, that's okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll never know until we get her involved. That becomes the bottom line. And, and it, you know, and it does, because I got to think with the inventory, if you're bringing inventory to the home, mm -hmm. that's where, you know, what cost is it? Because how many rooms are we staging in the house? How much are we bringing in? Mm -hmm. And all of that is going to be a variable. So the, I think really everything starts with just come in and have that staging consultation. They're going to get that as a minimum and of course, I think it's, it probably makes a difference as to the house, yeah, uh, the price, uh, but it's two hundred and fifty dollars, right, for a great consultation. And let's face it, we're professionals at marketing real estate, and so we've got to know that one of the keys is to bring in a professional who can enhance what it is that we do and have that as part of a team. So, uh, any other questions, guys? Any from the peanut gallery here? No, everybody's where, all good where's here. Where's the company uh, based out of? Downtown Rochester. That's where my oh. warehouse is. And what's the um, like mileage range that you guys typically will go? So, as long it, um, I've got a staging tomorrow in Royal Oak. So I'll go to Royal Oak if it's Northville. I'm probably going to just do a consultation and then call one of my my staging friends that's over in that area to take it from there. What if it's Fenton? I would go. There you go. Alec is up in that okay. office, Thank you. so it would be that area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would go. Awesome. Yeah. Um, how do you set your price? When you're staging, same principles, the entire home, you're staging, and you've got to sell... Do you sell all of the homes, all the rooms, or do you recommend just the main rivers area? Okay. And how do you price? Is it uh, according to number of pieces of furniture? Or so questions coming in from that aspect of what if I got a fully vacant house? Do we stage the whole house? Do we do certain rooms? How much do we bring in? And, and then how is the cost determined? Okay. So I'm going to show you how, how this all breaks out because there's a cost to doing business, right? So here's how this works. If I need to bring inventory into a house, I'm not gonna stage the whole house because my data shows that I'm gonna get the same return in days on market on if I just do key rooms versus do the whole house. I've studied it for five years. So how it works with the key rooms, there's three variables. One is it needs to get there by a professional movers. Two guys in a truck, and that's not who I use, by the by. I work with a professional mover. Two guys are 150 an hour. Then I pay a surcharge on top of that. So on average, it's about 600 in, 600 out, just for me to get the inventory out of the warehouse and back. Then my fee to put together the plan, manage the project, come up with the staging inventory, pack it, place it, and be there for the photographer, that's 1,200. So that's where it starts. Then if they want a room, like if they want to do a family room or a living room, that's $300 a month. If they want to do a kitchen, like 150. So on average, I would say for key room staging, it's about 3000, give or take. Sometimes a little south of that, like tomorrow, mine's 2,900, but it's just based on the inventory. So the only variable is how much inventory. These are set costs. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, good. And then we have, what about Lapeer? Because we have the office Lapeer. Call me, y'all. <laughs> Just call me and we'll work it out. Yeah. I, a lot of it's going to depend upon the office and what you're doing, right? Well, yeah. And it it's just, we have to start having a conversation because part of it is, is if you're going to bring on a stage or what you're bringing on is you're bringing on a marketing partner. So you might want to date me before you decide you like me. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, interest rates and buying homes. We've been saying that it's marry the home, but date the rate. Right. 
And so there's lots of stagers where I would suggest you could go is the Real Estate Staging Association has a website and they have stagers that are all in the different areas around the state of Michigan. So you aren't just tied to me. Don't feel like you have to be just tied to me. So we've got a number of agents here in Rochester that have used Jeannie and in our other offices also. It's the reason that I had her on because I kind of try to screen everybody uh, to make sure that we got somebody that I know is reputable, that people can speak for her. And very clearly, everybody spoke very, very highly of Jeannie. Um, so guys, I'm going to let that be the wrap. To another Hot Topic Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed, got a lot from it. And uh, again, when we sent out the invitation for today, you got all of Jeannie's contact information. So everybody have a wonderful Tuesday. Go out, talk to a lot of people. We'll see you soon.